Let's take a look at some tips for cutting and sharpening tungsten electrodes. When I was first learning to weld, I don't ever remember using anything but the long back cap and a full length electrode. And that kind of makes sense because they're a lot easier to hold in your hand and sharpen and you can get more out of an electrode if you never have to cut it. But once you start welding real parts, things are always in your way and you're going to have to shorten that torch and cut the electrode. There are several ways to do it, but there's also some ways that can give you a lot of problems. So let's talk about the first thing that can give you problems, and that's this. Snapping the electrodes either with a couple of pairs of adjustable wrenches or with some wire dikes is not a great idea. You could probably get away with this on certain types of electrodes every now and then, but more often than not, you're going to get splits, and this one's really bad. Sometimes they're not so bad, though, and you can't even see them without a magnifying glass, and then you go ahead and sharpen it, and then it becomes harder to detect, and you might not even notice it. In fact, if you're just welding on DC on something that's not all that critical, you might not even notice it once you light up on DC, but it's split. We'll take a look at that now. I'm going to light up on a, a little chunk of aluminum, both on DC and on AC. I know I'm you know, not going to weld this. I'm just lighting up on it uh, using the same material for DC EN as well as AC just to keep things the same. But you can, you can see the split there if you look close enough. It's there. It's not seeming to affect the arc a whole lot. So you could weld something with this and possibly not even notice. But on alternating current, all of a sudden that split becomes a lot more noticeable and the arc becomes really erratic and wanders all over the place, especially at low amperage when you're starting and when you're tapering off. In fact, I remember a long time ago, I remember a guy wasting about an hour on his welding test, couldn't figure out what was wrong with his machine settings, and all that was wrong was he had a split in his electrode that he didn't know about. So it's best not to snap your electrodes or cut them with wire dikes. A fix is just to score them about three quarters of the way through, and there's people that would even tell you this is not proper. But this method has always worked for me, never given me any trouble, as long as I score it enough. Probably a better method would be a diamond wheel like this. This is a really cheap one from Harbor Freight. Ten bucks for a three-piece set. Uh, I don't know if they're going to discontinue them or not, but even on a low RPM drill motor, in about 30 seconds, you can score it about three-quarters of the way through where it easily snaps when it doesn't split. Now let's take them over and sharpen them up on this CK Turbo Sharp tungsten grinder. Now I know not everybody is doing the kind of work that warrants spending money on a dedicated tungsten grinder like this, but I also know people that have them now and wish they got them sooner because it makes a lot of difference in their efficiency, their consistency. Some of those friends are doing work inside food service plants where they're really strict on dust and it keeps the safety man away. Now I have sharpened an awful lot of electrodes doing this right here but I didn't need to light up on a razor blade or anything. It was usually scratch start on pipe, both carbon and stainless. But let's take a look at some low amperage starts comparing these two grinds here. This is the Turbo Sharp grind with a diamond wheel, nice fine finish. And using a machine with a five amp start, that's a, that's a nice crisp start. No real instability or arc wandering going on there. Now let's compare that to sideways scratches that are done with a rough hard rock. And this is what you'll get a lot of times. It won't happen every time necessarily. Here it is slowed down so you can see oh, the arc trying to come off all those scratches and, and wandering over to the edge of the metal where I don't want it to. That's not where the electrode's pointing. But that's why all the textbooks and information out there will recommend having all your grinding scratches running lengthwise. And of course it's better to have those grinding scratches as fine as you can get them. You won't get that using a hard rock like this, but you can do pretty well with a bench grinder with a fairly fine disc. But you won't get the consistency that you'll get with a dedicated tungsten grinder with a diamond wheel with a set angle. Another option is just chuck it up in a drill motor and use a belt sander or the drum portion of a belt sander. It's not ideal, but it is a way to do it in a pinch. Well, let's take a quick look at some general rules of thumb for how to prepare electrode for what metal. You got a choice of anything and everything with a tungsten grinder. You can dial it in and get any angle you want. But where do you use what? Here's what I do. Generally speaking, 
I'll grind it more like a needle for really thin metals where I want a really crisp start and that's really my main concern. I'm not really concerned about penetration. Like on these box cutter blades right here, I'm going to penetrate. That's not a concern. My main concern is not chewing those corners off when I light up. And so a nice needle-like point, generally speaking, will give you a nice crisp start at a really low amperage. I use filler metal for the end tacks, and I'm not using filler metal for the rest of it. I just want to show that you can have a stable arc on a job like this at lower amperage, even with a 332 electrode, as long as you put that needle point on there, and as long as the grind is nice and fine and consistent. You don't always have to drop down to a smaller electrode. Makes life simpler. Now for higher amperage jobs on DC, I like to use a lot less of a taper. I'm going to bump this up to 180 amps. It's a quarter inch thick cold rolled. You don't need a needle like point when you're running high amperage like this. It's kind of too easy to blow the tip off or dump that tip into the puddle if you momentarily duff the electrode into the puddle or slip the rod onto the tip of the electrode or whatever. This kind of tip lasts longer and penetrates deeper. Kind of counterintuitive, I know. So anyway, rule of thumb on how to prep the electrodes for different thickness metal, for me anyway, I sharpen it more like a needle with a lot of taper if I need crisp arc starts at low amperage, and I use a lot less taper for higher amperage and thicker metal. And the same taper works pretty good on aluminum, but I usually round it a little bit first. A good all-purpose grind for me is the one in the middle there, and that's the 40 degree. I did some testing a while back with different electrode angles, and I'll show you a couple of them here. The blunt tip right here is a 60 degree taper. It actually narrows up the arc cone and seems to focus the energy. Okay, a needle-like point like this will give you a nice crisp start at really low amperage, but at higher amperages, it has this weird effect. You see that halo up there halfway up the taper? Let me slow it down for you. At first, you don't see it. The electrode's not really hot yet. And then, as the amperage increases, the electrode gets to a certain temperature, you start seeing that secondary plume of some sorts. And that seems to just really fan out the arc envelope. Just seems to spread out the energy and not focus it into the puddle. But that's why we test things. So we're going to cut, slice and dice, polish and etch. Then we'll be able to see the difference. So here we go. Obviously, this is the more blunt tip. There's what penetration that got. And here is the needle-like tip. And you can see there's quite a difference. One test is worth more than 100 opinions. Hey, I'd appreciate it if you go check out my store at weldmonger.com. High-quality welding gear like TIG kits, tungsten, gloves, new products being added regularly. Go check out the reviews. Appreciate your support.